Eastern Europe is on the move. In the most dramatic movement of people seen since the end of the Second World War, 1990 has become a year of migration. The initial tidal wave has turned into a steady flow across the wide open borders of the continent. Whole communities now feel able to reclaim their ethnic identity. And for many, the yearning for their homeland is no longer just a dream. This week on Europe Express, we are devoting the whole program to perhaps the longest and most dramatic exile of all of Europe's displaced people. The Greeks of the Black Sea were persecuted by the Ottoman Turks and banished to Siberia by Stalin. They are now longing to go home to the land of their ancient ancestors. This is the story of the Odyssey of the Pontian Greeks. nostalgia on the radio. Greek traditions kept alive on the streets and in the backyards. This is the diaspora, a million ethnic Greeks living thousands of miles from Athens in the heart of the southern Soviet Union. The shores of the Black Sea are the home for most of the Soviet Union's Greeks. They're known as the Pontians, after the word Pontus, which in ancient Greek means sea. Legend has it that Jason and his Orgonauts were the first to come here in search of the Golden Fleece. If we look back to the past, then the Apollo Roman, Ole Ilinika, Ole Timetron, this is the Nashi Greeks lived. Весь Черноморское побережье было все было греческое. In fact, there have been Greeks living around the Black Sea ever since the ancient Greek Empire. But the shorelines have changed hands many times since then. First, there were the Khazars, then the Tartars and Cossacks. And from the 16th century onwards, the Islamic Empire of the Ottoman Turks. Hundreds and thousands of Pontian Greeks fled religious persecution under the Ottomans, many settling on the northern shore of the Black Sea. By the end of the First World War, these lands had become part of the new Soviet Empire, and many more Greeks were welcomed here as Soviet citizens. Escaping from conflict and looking for work, they sought refuge in the Crimea and Georgia. <laughs> Я хочу вот на примере пантийских греков сказать, что э, э, когда мы проживали в Турции под игом Османской империи, наша жизнь была борьба за выживание. В течение под э, Османским гнетом мы сохранили свою христианскую веру, сохранили наши традиции. И в Грузию мы переехали только ради того, чтобы не ассимилироваться, не пропасть как нация, не пропасть как, грек, как греки. Since Catherine the Great, the Tsars had encouraged Orthodox Christianity, and the Pontian Greeks continued to feel welcome under the Communists, with their culture and faith relatively intact. Life wasn't easy in Georgia. They barely scraped a living off the land. But for them, this exile was preferable to life under the Turks. In the early 20s, Lenin's young communist state was tolerant of minorities. It didn't feel threatened by the enterprising and educated Greeks. The Red Empire was a haven for the distant descendants of Aristotle. But as Olga Nikolaidis remembers her school days in the Crimea, the peace was not to last. Mm -hmm. 
It was Stalin, fearful of the security of southern regions like the Crimea, who started moving all foreigners deep into his vast empire. Ethnic minorities were no longer to be tolerated. They were to be crushed, as Anastasia Danikidis remembers. The exiles were sent thousands of miles east, deep into Central Asia to the Muslim Soviet republics of Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. But some Greeks were to go further still, to the awful wastes of Siberia. The Haralambidis brothers came from Georgia's Red Valley, but Stalin wanted to rid his native state of all Greeks. Yanis was just a boy when a transport came. One in four perished. But for those who survived the exile, it was like another planet in distant Siberia and Central Asia. They were welcomed by the locals, who preferred anybody to the Russians. But it's not easy to forgive 40 years of banishment. After Stalin died, life became easier. Many of the Pontian Greeks were allowed to return back full circle to their villages on the Black Sea. But as Anastasia's son, Kolya, remembers, it wasn't a happy homecoming. Organs of our Soviet forces were pushed out of our way. They were told that there is no water, 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 what is it that can be connected with the Krim? You, the Greeks, what do you have to do with the Krim? Maybe the Soviet forces are convenient when the people are in the process, so that they can be more easily assimilated here. Вообще, ну, люди исчезли, как вроде, со своей национальности и так тому подобное.
The Soviet Union of today is no longer Stalin's. But the freedoms of perestroika have brought new problems, economic deprivation and ethnic tension. The Pontian Greek now find themselves caught in the crossfire of Gorbachev's nationalist crisis. And they have a decision to make, to stay by the Black Sea or to make the long way home. Εδώ τη φλίδα. Αγαπητοί ακροατές, αρχίζουμε την εκπομπή της ραδιοφωνίας της Γεωργίας στα ελληνικά. Σήμερα στην εκπομπή μας, τα νέα της δημοκρατίας της Γεωργίας, τα νέα του πολιτισμού και των σπορ, συνέντευξη με τον Διευθυντή του Συγκροτήματος Παραδοσιακής Μουσικής Ο Ποντιακός. Περιστροϊκά, κατώρα νάχει ως πασλήνιο γόδι νάχει στο Σαβιετσικό Σαϊούζι, Способствовало тому, что у народов Советского Союза, в частности у греков, началось повышение национального самосознания. В начале 80-х годов были предприняты некоторые шаги в этом направлении, чтобы способствовать вот повышению именно национальной культуры греков. Были, было введено преподавание греческого языка в средних школах. Переведите мне предложение. Метафорсия Михаил Горбачев открыл границы. Мы стали чаще бывать в Греции. Не знаем нашей истории практически. Утеряли многие традиции. Ниню все бы это можно было бы воссоздать, организовать, если бы были бы предпосылки для создания греческой автономии. Ethnic conflict is in danger of splitting the Soviet Empire. The Kremlin is desperate for a solution. Many now see autonomy as a serious option for many groups, including the Greeks. It's supported by Gorbachev's former advisor, the mayor of Moscow, himself an ethnic Greek, Gavriel Popov. I think that the Soviet government will not be able to do it, because the decision is not only for the Greeks. The problem is that in the Soviet Union, there is a group of people who live in the same position. Нельзя говорить о выезде на родину. Собственно, родина здесь и была все время. But most Greeks think autonomy is unrealistic. They don't live in one single region, and everywhere they do live is being torn apart by fighting between other nationalities. These Georgians, demonstrating recently for their own independence, won't offer any gifts to Greeks. Προς Ιωριέν, ο Ιωριανό λέει Ιωριέ γιατί Ιωριανούς. Κατάλαβε. Θα έρθει και αίκον ημέρα οπότε θα διέχνε μας και πικί. Άτσι έχουμε. Γιατί εδώ το Ισουάνι, πώς λένε να σου... Ισουάνι εκεί, Ισουάνι εκεί. Είναι. Εκεί σου μας στα χωρία, να πάτε να βλέπετε. Κοντά στα χωρία έρχονται να τους πείτε και εκεί γυρίζουν, έρχονται σε μέτρα τα χωρία και λένε αυτά θα είναι μέτρα λέει. Κάποτε, κάποτε αυτά θα είναι τα δικά μας. Τα σπίτια και εκείνα όλα θα βγει γιατί είναι δεμέτερον το χώμα. Αυτό το κύμα είναι πολύ σοβαρό και είναι απένα το κυριότερο γιατί φύγουν γιατί όταν μαλώνουν τα έθνος και τους Έλληνας ας πούμε όταν λένε εσύ ποιο μέρος πήρες. Ας πούμε πήρες του Απχάς και του για τους Γεωργιανούς, για τους Αζερμπαιτζάνους, για τους Γεωργιανούς και τα λοιπά αρμένους για τους Αζερμπαιτζάνους. Ε, πώς να κάνουμε εμείς. Εμείς λέμε, θέλουμε με όλους τα δημιουργές καλύτερα. Όχι, πες μου, με τι να είναι εσύ είσαι. But trying to be neutral doesn't give you protection in an ethnic war. Hundreds have been killed here and nobody is safe. Soviet officials and optimists say the nationalist turmoil in Georgia is only temporary. They say the prospects for Greeks in the Soviet Union are good, but the majority disagree. Αυτό να το ξέρετε. Αυτό ερχήνεσαι και δεν θα, θα σταματάει. Θα πάει, δεν ξέρω, 10, 20, 50 χρόνια Έλληνες σιγά σιγά θα φύγουν. Από τη Γεωργή, από το Καζαχστάν, οπωσδήποτε θα φύγουν. Θα μένουν, ναι, δεν λέω, θα μένουν. Πόσοι, δεν μπορούμε να λέμε. Α, μερικοί θα μένουν, αλλά νομίζω οι πολλοί θα φύγουν. So in Moscow, at the only Greek consulate in the Soviet Union, the queues are getting longer. Among the thousands starting a long procedure of obtaining an exit visa is Costas. Oh, I, I mean, I tell you, I want to 
Όλοι είναι θέμα για να πάω, για να ζω, να είμαι σε μόνο, για πάντα είναι, για να είμαι σε μόνο το λαό να πες. Να μιλούμε ελληνικά είναι για το, να, τα μωρά να μία να σπάνε, να ξένε, τα εθνικά, τα νατσανάλια μπήκε πώς. But what everyone seems to forget is that the Pontians aren't really Greek. The language they speak is more the language of Homer than of modern Athens. They talk of Greek ancestors, but in some cases, their forefathers left Greece thousands of years ago. But in today's age of nationalism, they too yearn for a separate identity. They aren't as violent as many, but they're still nationalists. How else can you explain their fervor for their ancient homeland? In Georgia, in the Crimea, in Kazakhstan, the Pontians are packing their belongings. They are putting their houses on the market and they're going back to Greece as soon as they get permission. One of them is a victim of Stalin's purges, Olga Nikolaidis. The Pontians could not have chosen a more difficult time to make their long journey home, for Greece is facing many troubles of its own right now. It's trying to cope with a major economic recession, and this influx of new arrivals is an added burden that many Greeks could do without. The journey that spanned 2,000 years and 4,000 kilometers is coming to an end. The Pontian Greeks are returning. And it is to the market under the slopes of the Acropolis that they come. Unable to export their rubles, the Pontians have no hard cash. They are forced to sell the few possessions they've brought from the Soviet Union. Jambu, Kazakhstan, Russia. Έχετε πολύ καιρό εδώ; Όχι, τρία μήνες, τρεις μήνες. Και έχω πρόβλημα, έχω τέσσερα παιδιά, μικρά, και στην ίκη πλέον πολλά και δεν κάνουν τα νιατά λεπτά εμένα. Έχω πρόβλημα γι' αυτό. Τι θα κάναμε; Πολλούμε τα πράγματα και δύομε στην ίκη και. Δουλειά πα, δεν είναι τώρα δύσκολο. Τόσο καιρό περιμένουμε δουλειά και δεν μπορεί να βρει δουλειά. Αυτό είναι μηχανόλογο στα καράβια. Έξι μήνε περιμένουμε και ούτε μπορούμε να βρούμε τη δουλειά. Many new arrivals come to the scruffy industrial town of Lafrion on the coast near Athens. They're housed in an area which once provided shelter for Romanian Greeks. It's little more than a shanty town and it's becoming a ghetto. Some Pontians who were given special permission to leave the Soviet Union have been here since the 60s. They were welcomed, but now things are getting harder. <laughs> 
αυτοργοστάσεις για να μην εκλείδεραν. Ε, πέρνανε το ημερικόν ο, ο κόσμος και παίρνε και το ψωμί και ασύνταν για ακριβό. Τώρα κλείδεσαι το εργοστάσιο και σε ένα σπίτι πέντε εργάτες σε δουλεύαν εκεί και τώρα κανένας δεν δουλεύει. Τι θα φάνε, τι θα πιούν, δουλεύει άλλο που δεν είναι τι να κάνουν. Ζούνε οι άνθρωποι, αλλά δεν έχουν να πληρώσουν νίκια. Τα νίκια είναι το κακό. Το νίκι. Κρίμα είναι. Μια γυναίκα γρήγορα να κάθε μέσα σε εκείνη την παράγκα. Προχτέ πήγε να πεθάνει η γυναίκα. Και από πώ, μην τα συζητάτε. Σαν τα ποντίκια του λένε. Άστι, μην τα συζητάτε. Τι να σα πω τώρα, τώρα δεν μπορώ να σα πω τίποτα άλλο. Πώ είναι τα σπίτια να φέρετε, τι θα κάνουν. Θα κλειστούν σαν τα ποντίκια. Μόλι βραδιάζει, κοιμούνται. Ούτε τηλεόραση, ούτε ψυγείο, τίποτα δεν υπάρχει. From the suburban slums to the inner cities, Greece has fallen on hard times. Proportionally, it now has a budget deficit larger than Brazil's. And under the new government's austerity measures, unemployment is soaring. Just as elsewhere in Europe, the Greek sea incomers, even their long-lost Pontian brothers, are simply adding to the economic burden. So it's out of the frying pan and into the fire. Ήρθατε εδώ και χορτάσατε ψωμί, γιατί ήρθατε εδώ και πρόβλημα αν έχουμε εμείς τώρα. Τώρα που έρχοσαστε εσείς έχουμε εμείς πρόβλημα. Τα λεφτά τα δίνουν σε εσά. και εμείς μένουμε άφραγγοι. Το πρόβλημα ούτε δουλειά έχουμε ούτε εσείς ούτε εμείς. Και δεν περνάνε καθόλου και να έρθουν να δουν πώς περνάνε. Δουλεύουν, τρώνε και πίνουν. Άρχοντε είναι, δεν το έχουν δει στον ύπνο του στην αρχοντιά εδώ πέρα. Εμείς που είμαστε καθευτού εδώ δεν έχουμε τα καλά που έχουν οι πόντι. Ποιος το λέει. Στην Ελλάδα χωρίς μία. Χωρίς μία και το κράτος τίποτα βρίσκει. Ούτε φράγκο. Ούτε τα του 80 είναι. Και σου λέω πρώτη μέρα ήρθαμε στη σπίτι δεν είχαμε φαΐ τίποτα. Τίποτα δεν είχαμε. Και τις έκαμε στις που είχαν εδώ. Και σε έκαμε και ένα φάμενα. Και τώρα έρχεται αυτή εδώ πέρα λέει ότι εμείς περνάμε καλά και ιστορίες μας. This is Menevi, a bleak suburb of Athens. The land is not fit for returning heroes. It's not even fit for human habitation. They try and build homes for themselves, but they're contravening local housing regulations and need a lookout to watch for the police. The European community is planning to give grants to Athens to help settle the Pontians. Until then, many will be without proper homes even basic facilities. Well, here they were 7 people from the city of Dimarcho and they asked them to save their homes. The people started to save their hands. They were not able to save their hands. They were able to come here. They were able to make the decision of the government. The Silos here did a lot and he had the right. If we continue to have 10 families here, we will have a hole. A bitter return for the exiles. They're not welcomed as prodigal sons, but stigmatized as immigrants, even by the government. They're just the latest minority, ripe for persecution, by Greeks, by other minorities, and, to add insult to injury, by Pontians who've been here for some time. By a horrible irony, many are forced to seek shelter in the very packing cases that they've loaded up with such hope in their backyards in Georgia, the Crimea, and Soviet Central Asia. This one is used as a toilet. Some groups have even taken the train back to Tashkent and Kazakhstan. They feel they've deceived themselves about what they could expect in their mother country. Like the stories of Jason and the Argonauts, their dream of Greece was just a myth.